Hare Krishna Govind Prabhu. Welcome back Hare to the Mons Podcast. Nice to see you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. So, Prabhu, we have been discussing this series on political philosophy and the Bhagavad Gita, mm-hmm. or broadly Dharma. So, I thought as a continuation of that, but addressing a current issue, we could discuss uh, this hijab controversy that has come up in the uh, in the media nowadays. And from that, we can take it as a takeoff point for discussing about how the state and religion should interact in based on dharmic insights oh. mm-hmm. yes so, so i'll quickly start with the introduction of the broad context so in karnataka in a college there are some muslim girls yeah, they said that or they now people say that they were indoctrinated or whatever they suddenly started saying that we want to come wearing hijab for many years for many decades the college has been going on and different people from different religions have been coming but they started insisting as their right and the college authorities refused and then it became a whole national international controversy in fact the western media immediately picked it up and then it's the supreme court the case is going on so while this is a very politically surcharged specific issue but i thought we could take it as a take off uh, as a departure point for a broader discussion Yes. So I thought of a four level discussion. One is that traditionally say in, uh, in the in the dharmic texts how do individual religions and the state interact? Then how does how can those insights be applied to say the modern day context modern secular situation? And how do we apply those to say religions that don't really respect secularism like Islam? we'll come to that a little later and then finally we can see how this could be applied to this particular situation and then broadly for promoting we could say religious harmony in india hmm. is that okay yeah yeah, yeah. thank you hmm. so the first thing is that if we look at the mahabharat is the uh, or the ramayana or the uh, the dharmic text broadly speaking so is we have discussed earlier how in one sense the government was also secular that yudhishthir maharaj was a vaishnava but there were shaivites and other shaktas and others were also there in his kingdom mm-hmm. and so secular you had mentioned that secular doesn't mean that they don't care for religion as it means rather they facilitate different people to practice different religions but then how much was the overt expression of each tradition of its own faith so that means with the vaishnava shaivites would would is was their practice a personal affair or was it something which would also be in public and coming in the public domain so would the state impose any restrictions on that if you see in the in the thank you for inviting and discussing this point if you see the shastra you know the categorization of uh, you know sampraday to sampraday this philosophy to that philosophy that philosophy existed in your personal practice but they would not have a conflict there could be a savat but there was no conflict in fact maitre rishi it doesn't fall into the category of strict vaishnav but still mm, he spoke yeah. certain part of the bhagavatam to vidura instead somebody who was in love with krishna that is uddhav yeah beautiful so, so we see the dynamics where if you have something to contribute and you are better than a vaishnav or a vaishnav is better than somebody else so they would not stop themselves from learning thinking that he does not fall into my faith mm. faith always remained very very personal and nobody could people did not people did not care about your faith amazing so yeah. that maybe that is how we can understand even jiva goswami went to varanasi to learn sanskrit yeah yeah that was mm. not at all a point of a discussion no practitioners of sanatan dharma was in the mode of converting somebody from some other faith okay we see lord chaitanya when he came to anupam he spoke about krishna that was okay but when he met another devotee who continued to remain ram bhakta he glorified that also 
yes even murari gupta himself is a big example yeah yeah yes. so that was not an issue well somebody might say that you are still a vaishnava only but you are saying that even then it doesn't matter even in that doesn't matter if you study be... if you study in the scripture like vashishta maharshi is a loving lord ramchandra to be sent with vishamitra oh okay yeah, so there is no fear of oh my god he will brainwash him this is a very modern thing of you know the teacher or an institution or a people feeling fearful of somebody hijacking kidnapping and taking them away so you will never okay. see any such controversy in the mahabharata and drama and in regards to what you practice okay but is to clarify this and i had talked with some madha sampradaya devotees mm-hmm. and they used to say that the generally if somebody joins like somebody comes as to student of the madha sampradaya they don't read advaitic books ever directly mm-hmm. they only read their acharya's books and they will read their acharya's refutations of advaitavad until they become well grounded mm-hmm. in dvaitavad only then they may directly read advaitavad books so there is something again again, yeah. again that is also you are talking from 1000 years history only since you are discussing about mahabharata and ramayan okay. you know let us not come to the modern era oh okay so yeah medieval yeah. also you are talking as modern only yeah, okay. yeah. the yeah. shastra okay. era the shastra era now we will discuss that point what you mentioned is also truth according to what is the capacity of people you now people okay. cannot handle limitless diversities okay you know? but when we when we go back to the scripture just because i am trained in this way that is not necessarily the eternal reality i am okay. trained you know whether it is madhva whether it is sri vishnu whether it is iskon whether it is shankara they will train every student to practice their own path till they become completely mature that is there that is required but mm. this principle does not make an eternal principle from the perspective of the scripture in okay. the scripture you are born mature you are born integrated <laughs> you know okay. so there, was, there was no division in regards to this philosophy that philosophy so no no division in the sense that it was not divisive people were not conflicting yeah, yeah yeah so so in that sense the state didn't have to intervene to regulate anyone absolutely there, there like is a, okay. there is no such description anywhere in the shastra where king yudhishthira maharaj had to involve to deal with the conflict of two opinion makers yeah in one sense kshatriya resolving a brahmanical dispute doesn't make sense also from yeah. the varanashtra yeah. perspective yeah okay now what happened in kumbha mela there was separate separation for the vaishnav bathing place in nasik and trambakeshwar and for the shaiva different this is not this this did not exist in the the time of the mahabharata and drama so actually were there like well defined denominations also that's a good vaish- question that is a good question <laughs> <laughs> the denominations were non existent really well in the mahabharat i remember as far as at least what i have read that when the pandavas met dhaumya for the first time mm. they it seems that from his markings they recognize that he is a vaishnava and they were happy also then they I felt he's also qualified so they had requested him to be their priest because that the description of he being vaishnava or not is not there you know vaishnava dharma bhagavad dharma is naturally mentioned in the scripture you know okay. krishna sharanagati is taught by markandeya rishi to the pandavas in the mahabharat the concept of sharanagati markandeya rishi teaches even okay. though originally markandeya rishi himself was a devotee of lord shiva you know mm. lord krishna okay. himself took arjun to kailash to fetch the the pashupatastra you know before the battle with uh, jayadrath is krishna took or actually arjuna went himself no no nee, krishna and arjuna went together oh really okay matlab they saw the dream it is not that they actually went unhone swapne mein dekha ki dono bhi ja rahe hain and then lord shiva invited them it was like a real it's a sakshatkar more than a dream hmm so in one sense you could say it is they 
it is all a cooperative endeavor like the amrut manthan lila if you take there vishnu is there shiva is there the various yeah, devatas yeah, are there yeah, yeah. so okay so the devatas may have occasional conflicts among each other and similarly the followers might have occasional conflicts but overall there was again conflict was not based upon philosophy <laughs> conflict is based upon you know okay. you taking some extra nectar or you are taking somebody else's wife that that kind of conflict was there the human conflict but the philosophical conflict was non existing so this was because philosophy was not considered important or philosophy was seen as a personal philosophy you know, especially shraddha and that you know how you perceive how you perceive the scriptural reality was between you and your teacher but when you come to a common place you bring a common you know common minimum program whatever is most common to the common people you talk to them integrated philosophy rather than exclusive one okay now if i go to a village they don't need to know whom i differ with they need to know the glories of the lord if you just speak the glories of krishna if you speak the glories of lord narayan mm. do you need to teach them the philosophy okay so in one sense you could say philosophy was more like a uh brahmanical occupation brahmanical engagement yes and in general people don't need to get caught in yeah. philosophy yeah yeah okay that, that makes sense yeah. and it's difficult for people in general also to appreciate philosophy so and, and then what happens if people hear philosophy they don't have the capacity to integrate it they become exclusivist and that is one oh. of the greatest tragedy of islam and christianity when you talk about integration they feel that you are making me faithless you are making me disloyal therefore okay. before you or you start the discussion they put you know that veil of faith no no this this i cannot do or no nee, you will not lose your faith you will not lose your practice at the same time you can interact with the world in a most meaningful way without being liberal without being left without being reckless okay so in one sense very clear theological boundaries were not there they were more a matter of personal practice and yes like earlier we had also differentiated between dharma and bhakti so yeah. dharma is maintained more for maintaining order in society so even when uh, when say spiritual when 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 you are follow the particular tradition even leaders of particular tradition in the public domain they would not bring their conflicts yes mm. i remember once you had also mentioned that uh, there were three acharyas from dvaita advaita and shri sampraday who came together for a particular cause to protect a temple or something like that in the south that is the medieval the, history to begin the vijayanagar samraj the vijayanagar samraj shri uh, vedanta deshika and then akshobhya tirtha they supported vidyaranya tirtha Vidyaranya Tirtha was the original founder of Vijayanagar Samraj. Oh, Vidyaranya is the person who has written the quite a, a, a influential commentary on the Vedas. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. Okay. He is the brother of Sayana Charya, if I don't, if I am not wrong. Oh, okay. So then he wrote that commentary. So Vidyaranya, when he was the he was the guru of the kings, but eventually Vyasa Tirtha became guru of some of the kings. but they did not generally what happens you know in the other sectarian tradition they will cleanse everything the past in regards to the faith like if you take over okay as a vaishnav or as a whatever then you will erase all the connection of the king to the previous you know people who had their different faith but they mm. did not do like that neither the vaishnavas tried to erase the connection of the vijayanagar kingdom with vidyaranya you know and if you study the history of vijayanagar it is not that all the time the focus is not how krishna dev rai's guru was vaishnav the focus is how the vaishnava guru assisted krishna dev rai in establishing dharmic kingdom oh so akshatriya was not meant to 
sort of propagate one faith, but rather yeah. particular faith was ex expected to assist the Kshatriya in establishing Dharma. Yeah. Okay. So, just uh, continuing this point. So, when we talk about Raja Rishi, yeah. So the Krishna talks about that also in the Bhagavad Gita. So that means that so the, the Rishi part is not exactly a bhakta part. Rishi is more like they are spiritually inclined. Yes. Not necessarily. Yeah. They may be particular having a particular devotion, but that doesn't come into their Raja part. Yeah. So you don't you don't appoint a uh, Raja Rishi because priority priority. Okay. First, I will find. If it's a Vaishnava Rishi, then I will accept. No. Accept the Rishi or the teacher of the king based upon his Rishitva and his, his personal faith is a different subject matter. Oh, Vaishnava bhi ho sakte ya fir Shaivite bhi ho sakte. They could be Vaishnava or they could be Shaivite. That is their personal thing because that they would not bring into the forefront of their, you know, the kingdom. Okay, then say Ashoka became a Buddha, Buddhist. There was a change. There was a change. The change started oh, really? when, when the Indian systems, when the Buddhism, Jainism and other sects started coming, they started making the state religion as Buddhist. Sanatan Dharma cannot make Sanatan Dharma, you know, because Sanatan Dharma is like a banyan tree. There are different aspects of the banyan tree. You have to take the banyan tree as it is. And part of that banyan tree is Shraddha, which is like a root, which is not visible, which is foundation. Oh, okay. Right. But what so, these people did, they brought out the foundation to the forefront. They try to convert the kingdom into Buddhism. They try to convert the kingdom into Jainism. That is not, this is one of the greatest conflict where people don't understand how Sanatan Dharma operates. Okay. So in general, in religious history shows that whichever uh, faiths have spread, hmm. it is by a combination of Brahmana and Kshatriya. Hmm. So, I mean... Isn't that a natural thing? See, even Christianity eventually spread after Constantine took it up. Mm. Uh, Islam, you could say Muhammad was himself both, you could say, to, if you want to put in that categorization, he was both a, like a teacher of, the shastra, of their Shastra as well as a warrior. But generally for any faith to spread, Brahman and Kshatriya have to be together. Yeah, so, but, yeah. yeah, but the point is, in Sanatana Dharma, the, the, the whole concept of spreading is not important. Going deeper is important. Therefore, the 16 samskaras were the principle, which were the universal principle, which was done by the Kula Guru, which was done by the Purohit, which was done by the family teacher. So it was very, very, very decentralized. No, extremely decentralized. When it is extremely decentralized, no teacher ever wanted to take it to the global level because there was no need only. The whole concept of when we study Madhvacharya, Ramanuja, Vishnu Swami, Shankaracharya, Lord Chaitanya, at which stage they were operating? They are operating on the stage where divisiveness became very prominent. Either because of the personalized, you know, person-centric philosophy like Buddhism, personal-centric philosophy like Jainism, personal-centric philosophy like Baswana, personal... Uh, Sorry, how philosophy. are Buddhism and Jainism person-centric? Because they... it was started by a person. Okay, but they will say that actually they consider, in fact, they often consider that uh, the Vedic paths are more person-centric but because they are centered on the deity, Buddha and Jain, they, they say that we, we are just their examples. No, we are, are not, not again, we are not centered around the deities. We are also centered around Yajna. We are also centered around Mantra. We are also centered around, in Gurukul, I was just talking to the students in Gurukul, Madhva Sampradaya Gurukul. They do not teach any of the Vaishnava scripture regularly. That is, you have to read personally on your own, Mahabharata, Rama and Bhagavat. They teach them Vedas. They teach them samskaras. Even though it's a Vaishnava school. Okay. 
uh, anybody can come and study in regards to vedas okay so the idea of what you are saying is the idea of prachar in one sense you could say that became necessary when already there was division in society yes, coming yeah. from non yeah. non dharmic influences yeah 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 okay it's a, it's a basically you are you are counter acting the non vedic path who took to the strategy of going around and consciously systematically converting the people who were very seamlessly practicing their life you know seamlessly no oh okay so it's like to take out a thorn you need a thorn something like that yeah like that but okay. that is not the original foundational principle of the vedic path vedic path is an educational center vedic path is a sanskar centric vedic path is a festival centric vedic path is yagya centric yoga centric bhakti centric apne apne path ko lekar matlab iski charcha jyada nahi hua karte the there was no such a huge discussion about it well even in the upanishads we see philosophical discussions and uh, even debates also janak maharaj had called that big assembly where various yeah. uh, sages had come and had a debate yeah. so it was debate was there but it was more on the nature of ultimate reality it was not something yeah. for converting people is it what yeah. you think yes there was not the debate was also based upon certain specific subject matters like there is a debate between uh, in ashtavakra and bandi okay you go through that debate you will find what are they discussing about they are not discussing establishing param satya as bhagwan param satya as a brahman param satya as parmatma there is a discussion between janak maharaj and subala yes that's quite well what is yeah. the discussion between them there is a discussion between vishwamitra muni and that chandal in regards to whether vishwamitra muni should eat cow's flesh or not and that does not stay there only it takes so many discussion from the vedic principle also and there is a discussion between uh, our uh, धर्म व्याद एंड कौशिकी ब्राह्मण ओके रिगार्डिंग टू सर्टन लाइफ स्टाइल बट यू विल नेवर फाइंड यू विल नेवर फाइंड वेर देर इज अ डिस्कशन इन अ पब्लिक फोरम टू प्रूव द ग्रेटनेस ऑफ युअर गुरु और युअर सिस्टम ओके सो इन वन सेंस if we see in the modern day krishna conscious movement what we have to do is you could say like a circumstantial necessity which has become uh, because of the presence of uh, ag- aggressive other faiths other yeah. okay yeah. yeah yeah so then it is always a tension between that we may have to counter counter those aggressive faiths by the same time we don't want to lose our inclusive spirit yeah because that is not your foundation the foundation of abrahamic faith is exclusivity hmm that the is foundation of sanatan dharma is inclusivity you might become okay. exclusive as a tool but you cannot be exclusive as your culture okay beautiful yes and that's why we see sometimes even in prabhupad's dealing sometimes he is very strong in confronting some some teachers some teachings brother times he is he when personally interacting with them he he is very broad and he says yeah he, for example he, i think dr mish with dr mishra of the yoga studio prabhupad said yeah philosophically we argue culturally we are friends yeah so so we may miss, we may not understand this difference between what is a what is like a circumstantial tool and what is our inner culture yeah so therefore when when a person who is not matured enough he chooses which is convenient for him or her because they are always fearing losing their faith because their faith itself is very shaky therefore those who have shaky faith not born out of sanskara born out of conversion hmm. so therefore you are always threatened are udhar mat jao don't go here this will happen that will happen well then you can say in today's world most people are born without sanskara so in that sense so, so therefore therefore again yes 
you know what you're saying about there has to be systematic protection of your people but at the same time they should know this is not the foundation of sanatan dharma mm. this is Think- time bound this okay. is a circumstantial bound but this is not okay. the constitutional reality of vedas yes and chakravarti pad also talks about in madhure kadambari that there are two kinds of shraddha there is swabhaviki and balin utpadita Hmm. so balanat paisa is by the prachar of others you hear so eventually everybody has to come to that swabhaviki shraddha that is the rag bhakti na in one sense you may not rag bhakti is not only about being attracted to krishna rag bhakti means natural you know okay no where no nothing can shake you it okay. is not it is not a discussion oh you know you should not be if if somebody is going through difficulty like in the mahabharat when draupadi kind of becomes aggressive about mm. uh, you know after the disrobing attempt so she speaks so angrily so yudhishthir maharaj misconceives that she has become an atheist so when he when he and when he presents his concern to draupadi she is like shocked and surprised how can you think main to gusse se bol rahi hu so therefore krodha is one of the rasa it is not necessarily krodha is synonymous to losing faith oh, in the okay. in the sanatan dharma krodha can also be expressed towards god but in islam and christianity there is no question of krodha you can't express karuna that means you become superior to god that's an offense you can't express vatsalya because god doesn't have parents you cannot express sakya what you can express is nothing but you know bhivatsya shantaras <laughs> okay i think no. there are uh, there are some christian saints who like francis and others who seem to have a, a more per- like uh, teresa of avila also she had a quite personal revelations but i agree that overall the conception that is of- that is that is their deeper practice of their evolved spirituality i am talking about the philosophy oh okay the original originality when they when they whenever they brought all the bible together a different kind of bible and they said they declared this is the foundational principle of bible those who went beyond it they they are christians but also going beyond the written laws of christianity oh yes okay you there's know? a whole tradition of desert fathers who are called they were quite mystical in their practices renunciates their their practice of christianity is quite different from mainstream christianity yeah so yeah, that means they are going deeper into their their core their core you know which is again the coming okay. from the concept of natural religion which you call it as sanatan dharma you call it as dharma whatever name you want to call you don't okay. want to call that it's okay you know okay makes jo sense jo swabhavik roop se anybody is naturally attracted to what is original that is sanatan dharma. oh okay yeah. it could be an eskimo it could be in south america it could be in pakistan it could be in arabi also so i don't claim we don't have to claim वो इसमें इंडिया का छापा है इसमें भारत का छापा है उसका जीव को कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल इट इट इज द इट इज द इट इज द साइन ऑफ देयर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल नेचर दे आर गोइंग डीपर बियॉन्ड द स्ट्रक्चर फेथ ओके सो दिस इज इन वन सेंस द यूनिवर्सलिटी ऑफ इफ इट्स सनातन देन इट डजंट हैव टू नेसेसरली ओरिजिनेट फ्रॉम हियर इट विल एक्चुअली ओरिजिनेट फ्रॉम द हार्ट इटसेल्फ फ्रॉम द ह्यूमन सोल फ्रॉम द सोल इटसेल्फ Yeah, it was systematized of universal understanding by the rishis and they spread across everywhere okay no. yeah okay so now i hear this itself is a fascinating subject but let's come to the maybe so so broadly speaking this issue of state religion conflict did not come in the dharmic uh, texts because he, there was not such rigid theological boundaries and people uh, kept uh, there's a overall you could say cordiality because shraddha was more personal yes so yes, but yes. now if we consider the world today 
uh, where secularism was has been become the mainstream religion or not religion mainstream practice and the idea is that you have your rights but as long as your rights don't interfere with my rights my well being my so as i say your rights extend till where my nose it touches my nose mm. you can't so so f- taking that with respect it is to the religion there is general understanding that religion is something which is a private business you can practice yourself so the mainstream society doesn't have any dharmic general orientations mm. and now neither does the state mm. so in such a situation secularism is functioning at least to some extent we have multicultural societies which are which are functioning yes there is not violent conflict between the religions in many parts of the world yeah. so sec- sec- secularism uh, where there is a de- reasonable separation of state and religion yeah. uh, what would be so this is the way you could say to some extent india is also functioning like that yeah. of course we can go deeper into how there is some anti majority kind of bias also within indian secularism yeah. but while well, secularism works uh, as a, you could say a, like a tool or operational principle in today's world mm-hmm. but then when there are now to some extent christianity has come to accept secularism that Christ, there is a very few places that christians are trying to you say use the state to impose christianity theocracy mm-hmm. uh whatever be the reason that is not, but islam is where you know, that when they are in minority they will use secularism to claim their rights to practice their religion as soon as they become majority they reject secularism and they don't really give rights to other religions to practice so in fact most of the countries uh, in the world where uh, islam is the major religion other other religions cannot be practiced publicly yeah. or at least there are significant restrictions so how, how what do the dharmic insights about say you could say inclusion or something how does uh, inclusive wisdom interact with the uh, a tradition that is itself exclusive so therefore these these things were non existing in the sanatan dharma so they never dealt with such problem no so there are no such stories in mahabharata and ramayana or in mm. the bhagavatam where you have to deal with exclusive people they always dealt with the rakshasas those who are spreading the you know aggressive violence towards the uh, astic people they had no problem of you know the nastic philosophy as long as it is not violent you could be charvak muni and nobody would touch you only time the avatara appears avatara comes when the rakshasas they create a disruption within the society they oppress the human being hmm. they oppress the material nature they oppress the environment then the lord comes otherwise okay. for the small small thing it is the it is the responsibility of the local group of people to deal with that local tradition to deal with that wo samasya aaye nahi tha so there are no okay. such stories you know just like there is omni corn is it there in the ayurved some people you know during the they are sending you know amri corn is already so they go stupid when they present try to present like it now if you talk to the traditional ayurved doctor said no vishanu ke bare mein varnan aata hai but cannot talk about particular disease so then ayurved has to deal with it in a different way because it is also an evolving science continuously depending on which rog is coming there is a foundational principle and then something new comes then you add to that foundational principle mm. so so therefore when you see some exclusivity by particular faith which plays the secular card when they are min- minority and then they play the faith card when they are majority you know making the mm-hmm. blasphemy law then making the jizya kind of situation yes, yeah. that non uh, muslims cannot own property they can work here so then this they may not issue, get citizenship also 
yeah. the Middle East so, again. Yeah, yeah. Right. so this one, this one then Dharma tradition, you know, Dharma will say, oh, this will create a greater conflict among human cooperation. This will create a conflict in the state. This will create conflict in the growth. So therefore, we have to deal something. So mm. based upon that, there would be like how Krishna came and told the Pandavas, the Kauravas. Right? You know, cooperate, mm. cooperate. So the principle of cooperation is always the foundational reality in Sanatana Dharma to, to such an extent that the Krishna offered cooperation principle to Duryodhan who was supposed to be given death penalty on many counts. <coughs> you know, he was an aggressor. You know, poison giver, arsoner, gambler, everything. Yes. But still, he was given that opportunity to work with the Pandavas. You be the king and they'll be the prince. But the problem with exclusivist, they are unreasonable people. Hmm. They want the whole pie for themselves. Their principle is simple. You die for me, man. I will not die for you. Mother te tektva jivita. So okay. when you when you when you fall into this category that everybody should die for me, they will, then they will also kill their own people. Karana told this to Krishna, my dear Lord, you cannot trust Duryodhan. He is not yes. trustworthy. He has no mm. concept of being friend to anybody. Who is speaking this? Karana, who is basically a loyal follower. So therefore, if you talk to these people who are very why, why was Karana so loyal? If you're so that is you, that is how that is how imposition makes you. Imposition makes you so blinded physically being loyal to your person externally. Hmm? Imposition. Imposition, imposition. If you ask these girls privately. No, you be modest. You be modest. You don't have you don't have to wear bikini as you know as Priyanka Gandhi said. Yeah. That shows how stupid the logic is. Right? No girl would want to wear bikini in the college class. They may wear it in the beach, but not in the classroom. They also no girl will have such stupid ideology. There could be little, but that does not that does not prove the majority logic. Yeah. So if you ask in the core of their heart, they would say, you know, you know what, we stand out exclusive. We want to be part of the college community. We want to be the part of the school community. Why do you do like this? Then unfortunately, they have the Karana psychology. They'll spell out privately to the Krishnas, you know, but on the battlefield, they'll fight against Krishna. And that is so sad for them. Amazing. It is so, so therefore, who is oppressed in the entire, this whole political, this thing, the liberals are exploiting the innocent. The radicals are exploiting the innocent. And the innocents are exploiting themselves while knowing that we should not allow this to happen, I would want to make friendship on the level of medical. If I'm a medical student, I would want to be a friend with another medical student. Doesn't matter what is his religion because I want to learn from him or her. Mm. Yeah. So, ye jo, ye jo bhed se ho jata re, we can't interact with them. So the learning is not going back and forth. There is no Adan Pradhan because of that exclusivity. People cannot handle exclusive people. They can respect them for their position, but you can never interact with them on the heart to heart and intellectual level. And that is the saddest part. You know? 
Hmm. So, in one sense, when somebody is being indoctrinated, you could say, and then they are being used. So, in such a situation, so you broadly are saying that this is not really an issue of religious rights at all. It is merely so. In many ways, you can say even Muslims in India are safer than in some other countries where if they don't belong to a particular denomination, if they are Shias in a Sunni country, they are persecuted. If they are Sunnis in a Shia country, they are persecuted. Yeah. In India, both of both denominations can live. So in that sense, they are safe. So and this this is known to many 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 Muslims. They know it, but what can they do? They have become like Karana. Hmm. It is better to be killed by the Pandavas than to be killed by our own people. Oh, it's a, okay. if you have to have a, if you have to have a compassion, you know I am not angry with them. My anger is to people like Malala. I wrote article about her only. Hijab hypocrisy. I wrote just article. You know. Therefore, Sanatan Dharma says you do anything you want. When Lord Ram met with the with the tribal king, Guha, you know what was the similarity between his eating habits, his dress code, his language? There was mm-hmm. nothing similarity between the two, and that didn't matter to Lord Ram. What was the similarity between the two? The connection of the heart. neither ram was there to try to change his dress code nor goa was trying to change ram's dress code oh so even this uh, you could say the rigid rule separation based on dietary habits also is that also something recent because that's one of the things which uh, quite strongly differentiates people have said some people say hindus are, are very puritanical about looking down at those who don't, don't eat per, in this particular way absolutely I, nothing you don't find that in the scripture lord ram can go and hug guha who was eating flesh bharadraj rishi offering flesh to the army of uh, ram some people were it's not that only vegetarians were there only non vegetarians there it was never issue a pure strict vegetarian had his own lifestyle and that didn't bother to those people who are non vegetarian the underlying principle of manu samhita and everything is it is not conflict between vegetarians and non vegetarians it is evolving from non vegetarian to vegetarian ye pravas hai ye gharshan nahi hai so that has to happen naturally that is, is natural it? yeah okay you know so we could say in today's world in one sense uh, we may need to do some counter preaching because there is so much aggressive propaganda of meat eating yeah in one sense even human history meat was never available as easily and as widely as it is now with the industrialized meat farms and other things mm. yeah therefore everything in the modern world everything is a propaganda the, coming back to say uh, the current situation so in general the in today's world the st- uh, so there are several countries which have actually ha- are having regulations on uh, on hijab they they have it for security purposes and other purposes like that so austria has that and i believe netherlands has it several other countries have that so in one sense in india this issue is not so much of religious rights because it if you come say from the bhagavata perspective also uh it is we also have to do loka sangraha each of us we have to be a part of the community that we are uh we so if that that uh that country requires certain rules to be followed now it's not a rule in the country this is basically a particular school a particular college saying and it seems the principle of that said you know you can even come wearing a burqa but you should just not wear it in the classroom so it's 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 a uh, it's it's almost like they are imposing whereas like you said krishna is uh, krishna was giving so much accommodation to duryodhan yeah. but then but 
it's like they are unreasonable so what would be the broad uh, so beyond this particular issue when you said hijab hypocrisy you said that article title yes. so w- what exactly is the hypocrisy that you are referring to over here the hypocrisy is people like malala where she wrote in her book about the suffocation she and many others girl went through in the islamic country wearing the hijab but when it came to india she just jumped in supporting the wearing of hijab it's a very interesting if you read that article you know that she is fully supporting that means she is a pawn in the hands of some people who want to create a unnecessary unrest in a country where it is talking about integration let us not work on caste based privileges whether it is your a brahmana caste or you are a jai bhim caste let there be no privilege for your superiority or your inferiority let us work in such a way if you have less i contribute for your growth if you have more you know if you have less i go and ask for help and if i have more i will give so the disparity will give rise to greater cooperation the disparity should not give rise to greater conflict and exploitation that is the purpose of sanatan dharma right mm. now one school which is which is making a clear stand this is how it should be then it should be dealt in such a way all the political party well they are so mean these are the greater terrorist one who creates a conflict among human being for a small gain of political rule they will be rotten in the i don't speak about hell i never speak about hell but these politicians if their agenda is division you know everybody should pray that they will rot in an eternal hell which does not exist in sanatan dharma hmm. if the entire country just we have to pray like this there should be yagya there should be puja jo bhi khot hai whoever is wrong whoever wrong agenda for divisiveness doesn't matter from which party hey the universal power you go whatever you call have a powerful universal prayer that mm-hmm. energy will burn this people to ashes for their crime against the humanity you know mm-hmm. because ultimately who get destroyed the hindu will continue his work आज बाद में बोला यार जाने दो हिजाब नो हिजाब क्या फर्क पड़ता है आई वॉन्ट टू गो एंड स्टडी एंड पुअर मुस्लिम गर्ल्स देल बी सो फोकस्ड ऑन हिजाब देल फील अ टेम्पररी विक्ट्री ऑफ प्रूविंग देर पॉइंट एट द एंड ऑफ द डे यू कंटिन्यू टू रिमेन पुअर एट द एंड ऑफ द डे यू कंटिन्यू टू रिमेन अंडर प्रिविलेज at the end of the day you continue to remain separated from the mainstream community controlled by your fellow man who would marry few more wife which woman in the world are even draupadi couldn't tolerate and why should she tolerate arjuna marrying somebody else krishna had to expand in 16108 however many times i heard one conversation one muslim girl is saying yeah yeah you know our shower wants to marry and we have no objection he can marry for is it so easy and why can't the liberals and modernists say oh my woman you are brainwashed psychology doesn't work like that hmm it doesn't function like that so the end in the end in this entire story the people who are basically completely beaten black and blue is their community only unfortunately karnaka vijay nahi hoga 
psychologically affected, separated from mainstream family, has no faith in Duryodhan's friendship, but still he will die for Duryodhan. Such a sad story. So, so in one sense, you are talking more of a Brahminical response to this issue where we pray and invoke the cosmic powers. Yeah. So, so politically, it's it's a it's a very tangled web. How it will work out, we don't know. But to some extent, education and awareness. See, it's it's like a very unholy nexus. And talking about some girls not being allowed to wear class hijab in the classroom. And such a big uproar, but in China, there are millions or more, more than a million Uyghur Muslims who can't even who are being tormented out of their faith, and there is not that much uproar about it. Nobody. Have you ever Hardly. seen? Have you ever seen any of this left liberal making any such statement? Yeah. And this there... becomes an international issue. You know, the football player, then the and a pop star, and then some spiritual people also. Are, but it is not an issue only. The local school can handle it. Mm. It doesn't need to go out of that place. That principal can handle it. He was handling also. But the purpose is to create unrest. And therefore, while sitting here, as a, you know, as the you know, having some sincerity of integration, cooperation with human being, we should give curse to these people and ask everybody, everyone should curse such divisive people that let there be a wrath of universe so that it will be a lesson. So therefore, this here we have to evoke the Rudra Shakti. Here mm -hmm. we cannot offer a prayer to flute playing Krishna. Because they don't deserve it. Here we have to offer the prayer to Rudra Shakti. To destroy whom? Not those who are against my faith. Destroy those people who are against humanity. Hmm. Faith will come afterwards. So such people are simply, they're not really actually propagating their faith. They're more like using faith as a means of manipulating others and gaining power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's a sad part. And in one sense, uh, broadly speaking, uh, in, in when you said in India, there is, a, whether it is this Brahman and Jai Bhim, and there's a disparity should lead to greater cooperation, not greater conflict. So are you saying that that is already happening in India or that is what should happen if you apply dharmic insights or what was that, the point that, of that? It was happening, but last, you know, I would say more and more divisive politics. Whenever there is a, whenever there is a talk of integration, you no, know, one nation. And what did Rahul Gandhi said? Can you imagine that such a, such a dangerous statement, union of states, now, yes. he cannot speak that unless somebody, some Western, some global propaganda is making him to speak that. Yeah, you know, it's... creating a division between the Tamil pride because you see that there is some separatism not amongst the Tamil people, among some Tamil political party. Mm. There are so many Tamil warriors fighting in the LOC border, not saying that hey, Eto, this is not my land, with the same vigor as somebody fighting in from a Punjab. So they don't like the integration of nationhood, so therefore they have to create a division. Therefore a curse has to go there. Not because of this party or that party. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, whether if we have invoked this Rudra Shakti and do Yajna, nothing. Just the, the, the entire country, as many as people, they don't have to use anybody's name. Like just in the 16th chapter, Krishna does not bring any Rakshasa's name. It doesn't call Duryodhana the Rakshasa. It doesn't call, uh, 
in a dushasan and rakshasa he only says these are the characteristics of rakshas and what mm. is the rakshasa's characteristics you know power position money more money more agenda so you don't have to call anybody's name you don't have to take rajiv rahul gandhi's name you don't have to take modi's name jo bhi us energy mein aayega wo bhasmo kar jal jayega Hmm. Now I'm seriously saying about this, you know, because ultimately, when Draupadi nothing worked, she called for the Lord to come. Yes, politically hmm. you do all everything, whatever has to be done to create a strategy of universal, you know, this thing. But when something is beyond, along with this, something is beyond you, there has to be good-hearted people, just like in the Naimisharanya, they sat. for what again for the humanity only mm. the purpose of bhagavatam purpose of ramayan purpose of mahabharat purpose of upanishad is not conflict but integration because it is sad millions of such girls and boys you know another very interesting principle is the mob psychology gives you false confidence when you are part of the mob you don't do research of your own limitation and capacities you are driven by the mob mob makes you falsely adventurous mm and that false adventure can only make things break down you can burn the buses you can break the glasses you can beat the people that is not heroic that is does not give you personal progress a mob valor does not allow you the capacity to handle to feed three four of your family member in a dharmic way yes no you know, there is one British thinker Douglas Murray has written a book called The Madness of Crowds. Oh. And he's talking about gender, race, and identity in today's oh. world. So he says basically that two things: when there is a mob psychology, it gives people a sense of belonging and a sense of virtue, without actually having to uh, strive to take any responsibility or grow. Yes. Yeah. So oh. it's. so you're saying that that can happen through say secular ideologies like uh, it can also happen through religious ideologies yeah naturally religious mm-hmm. ideologies it happens more yeah so you know because group takes the responsibility of your salvation rather than your own sadhana hmm so it's in one sense more of whether somebody is practicing personally their religion or not they want to show the world that i am practicing yeah mm. i think going back to the demonic qualities also that is one of the says that adhyo abhijanvan asmi yakshe dasyami modishe you know he'll perform perform yagya and they'll try to get a, a get prestige in society that i have i'm such a performer of sacrifices like that so that religiosity for exhibition mm. so at a so in one sense we can say that we are sharing a wisdom so we are more from a brahmanical perspective we are discussing so within our power what is there is that we can try to do more of spec practices for the purification of the world and at a political level however it resolves that's not in our control yeah but we should be politically alert to understand what is yes. the real issue yes that the is real true. issue is not who you know they're squashing their freedom of choice i have seen lot of liberal you know hindus who don't understand the issue they are they are basically it's like what dropat said if you are sick and your your brother sister is asking you to give you a samosa hmm. you have pneumonia and they are coming and crying oh because they are crying this is not fair you are stopping them from eating pneumonia eating samosa Uh, that is the attitude of the many so called innocent you know 
people with feeling of we are equally disposed to everybody same way we don't consider this is this or this is that hmm. now you are giving samosa to a person who is suffering from pneumonia similarly you are giving hijab to some children you are supporting hijab when that will not help them in an educational growth it will not help them to empower themselves it will create a psychological separate identity wherein they are supposed to interact with the entire school as one class in that class just like on the battlefield of kurukshetra arjuna was not chanting he was fighting mm. he was absorbed in fighting because that is what he is supposed to do so in the classroom why have you come there you have come from for the cause of growth artha kama you have come for artha and kama if that artha kama timing is there your dharma and moksha you can practice in the home it is flavored here you want to integrate between other student psychologically you need to think the way they th- think you have to act the way other students are acting because jitna aapka integration hoga utna learning badhega so how can you in the world psychologically and uh, technically from the medical perspective from the social perspective how could you support exclusivity in a classroom instead of integrity integration so you know this is quite a provocative point that yes what you are saying is that in the educational setting people are meant to come together and uh, then that's where learning happens and that's very true in uh, now at the same time we do see that there are some religious symbols that people may have like christians may be wearing a cross we may be wearing a kanti mala yeah and so so when does a religious simple because become intrusive and cause segregation let's today when it becomes a political issue it becomes a rest and un- unrest to create an unrest when your school hundreds of hindus in christian school have given up wearing bindi no bangles they with made the, them the rule, rules rules like that many schools and nobody made a national issue out of this oh huh? if you go and ask many christian school what is the rule they will say this is the rule it is implemented now also and forget i was in one hospital bhaktivedan hospital many years ago i stayed there 40 days because i had tb and from my window there is a college wish i had a mobile phone then so that this college is run by a muslim institution only and one day i saw something hanging from the windows black looking thing from every window every window the burqa clad girl would come to class and remove the burqa and hang it to the window i would see them jeans t-shirt if not jeans t-shirt they were moderately dressed in punjabi okay uh, that is a natural nature of a girl to be colorfully dressed especially in a public place you know the psychology of feminine nature is to express through different colors mm. and here with their own natural reality when they have come to college they are removing and keeping it aside i have seen it for if not for 20 uh, one uh, 40 days i saw this for at least 25 to 30 days as long as i stayed yeah so in one sense you, what you are saying is somebody will say what is the harm in this if that's the right they demand that if that's what they want to do why not let them do it so is it something like appeasement which is going to create bigger demands and bigger problems or is it it is it if it is a natural thing again natural if i go to some place and they tell if you want to come inside you cannot come in your dhoti you have to wear pant shirt hmm what i will do i will try to convince them please you know allow 
but if they insist i will choose okay if they are not allowing i'll walk out if i need to go i will change my class i'll go inside the issue is closed okay but from there you take a picture you create a protest send it to some group and from them they send it to the western world mm. so they are creating a propaganda that is the cause of trouble therefore in a in a regular case i would say chala farak ne padta i don't care what people wear but because it is an agenda centric the mm. purpose is to create unrest and therefore if you don't stand strong now i am not worried about sanatan dharma getting destroyed because that is not possible only you know because ultimately lord kali will come hmm all right according to we believe in the shastras we believe in the scripture those who are valorous those who are adventurous they will always protect practice and spread the teachings and knowledge of the vedas while mm. respecting and making helping others to become evolved become an evolved christian become an evolved islam sanatan dharma is not have a war of erasing religions and i can't erase because people have different flavors only right so therefore therefore the point is we are discussing about their own people we don't want karana to die we want karana to accept the throne of astinapur Mm. He deserves. Are you are people of this land? You are a Kerlite. You are a Kannadiga. You are a Marathi. You are a Punjabi. So why are you identifying with something in regards to your dress code? You know your habits, which are totally unhealthy for your mental and your physical health also. रिलीजन की बात ही नहीं कर रहे हम लोग ये अच्छा नहीं है आपके लिए दैट गोज अ लिटिल बिट इनटू अ समथिंग व्हिच एवरीबॉडी नॉट एक्सेप्ट दैट हाउ इज इट हार्मफुल टू मेंटल एंड फिजिकल हेल्थ सो मेंटल हेल्थ यू कैन से दैट टू मच ऑफ सेग्रीगेशन बट ओवरऑल आई एम गेटिंग द पॉइंट दैट टू थिंग्स इज इज देयर सी इट इज इट इज अ it could be an issue which could have amicably amicably resolved itself without and either way it doesn't matter whether they yeah, yeah, they yeah. go in they don't they are allowed they're not allowed yes but yeah. when something is made into a huge scandal yeah. huge huge controversy then it become it stops being about that particular case yeah and it starts becoming about about say furthering a particular agenda propagating a particular narrative so and then that is where uh, the yeah that is where i think things have to as you said stand strong yeah so tomorrow so for example as devotees when we go to the as say brahmacharis or whatever when we go to the middle east like we can't wear dhoti kurta and go there yeah. so then obviously as you said we have two options either we don't go there at all or we adopt some other dress and go there yes so it depends on whatever purpose whatever we have a particular purpose and if a if the in a particular place whether we can fulfill that purpose or not that depends on those local rules and again you could say this is also a part of decentralization yes. that you know you, you even a country cannot mandate every single school that you should have this you should allow this and you should not allow that then if the country is going to do that the country should have like as you said christian schools also will christian colleges you cannot have rules which violate people's faith so that would be overall it could be a huge amount of overreach to over even overrule the school's decision then why overrule this college decision why not overrule all the other religious institutes which are all the other religious institutes who have their own dress codes yeah. and to so that no university should have any dress code at all which violates people's faith that would be it would be almost like in trying to assert their own power they will end up giving power to the state to make decisions which the state has no business to be yeah that is the point also hmm. 
true. Therefore, the wise person would have come to that college said, what is your problem? Why are you not allowing? These are the reality. Oh, makes sense. You will talk to our community girls that you don't wear hijab or you change your school, come to learn in madrasas. Hmm. No political person has right to bring an issue sitting in an ivory tower from a stolen money use these poor people for their advantage and not provide them anything because as long as you are part of the mob a mob confidence means one of the most you know underprivileged in confidence a mob confidence oh. means completely underprivileged personal confidence so true it's saying that's a saddest no. part so no it's almost like the louder i speak the weaker is my inner voice yes hmm so 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 um, as a broad level you know we are, most people may not be involved with this controversy as such hmm. yes that's come in the news but to maybe the last question maybe the, to act according to dharmic principles broadly in today's world so what is it that we can do so that this uh, interaction between state and religion that can go on more smoothly as individuals is there something which we can do individual therefore again like uh, i am working on the 16 sanskaras you know seminar is very interesting that sanskara is connected to refinement and the civilization is connected to culture sanskriti sanskriti is a society bound and refinement is a personal bound i refine myself i refine myself so as much as a family and smaller communities they refine themselves speak assertive language of the vedas therefore so that you know we grow because in the forest the forest is defined by tree you know you cannot create a forest a forest is created by individual tree giving to birth to another tree okay so so what is the metaphor over here so, so metaphor is as much as every individual family communities practice their role as much they are supposed to you know personal growth and contribution hmm okay so each of us can strive to become sturdy trees yeah and then okay makes then the forest become very powerful hmm no? and the unwanted useless you know poisonous trees will be uprooted by the power of this integrated you know strong trees only hmm you know either you mend down like if you come to a school where there are students who are educating learning powerful you know the school is focused on education only and if you come with an agenda of wearing this dress only you will not stand that you will be sidelined because you come with an agenda of dress but here the kids have come with an agenda of education the agenda of education will always drive away the agenda of which is not education hmm makes sense no and therefore everything begins with the person only shivaji maharaj is a person prabhupada was a person the revolution did not happen because they had an army when they when they came from wherever they came from right higher realms they did not come with the army they created the army because of their personal conviction especially on the political front if you see shivaji maharaj the situation was extremely unfriendly for the marathas to even think of having their own kingdom तो एक व्यक्ति ने एक व्यक्ति ने नहीं किया परंतु एक व्यक्ति ने चालू किया ही वॉज नॉट द वन पर्सन डिड इट ही वॉज द वन पर्सन स्टार्टेड इट 
Now, there is a difference to say that he did it. Now he started mm. it and others joined him. Hmm. So in one sense, it's like how the Ganga came to the earth. It was multi-generational. Yes. So this is also the regeneration of dharma also take many generations. Each of us has to keep doing our part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Thank you, Prabhu. You would like to add something or should I try to summarize? Summarize, you can summarize. Yeah. Okay. So broadly, we discussed today about the interaction between religion and state based on as a takeoff point of the hijab controversy. So in the dharmic texts, one's own shraddha was seen as a personal thing. And while there were discussions and even debates among the brahmanas, but they were on philosophical issues which did not affect the people in general. The theological boundaries were not something which led to aggression or intolerance towards each other. And the, the king didn't, the state didn't have to step in to regulate because people regulated themselves. And there was overall harmony because the Sanatan Dharma itself is inclusive. That there is a natural growth of faith and everybody will grow according to their faith and there is space for everyone. So even somebody like Charak could also live and he could, he was not threatened because of his philosophy, because of his atheistic philosophy. Now, things started changing, say when Buddhism, Jainism, uh, they they started, when they became the state religion, that is when the, the, the king became a Buddhist or Jain, like Ashoka became then, he started using the state infrastructure to propagate. And from that time onwards, then this separation between state and religion, that became lesser and then it had to be countered. So, you, but still, Isada, Isada, how uh, Akshobhya Tirtha and, uh, and Vidant, no, who is that? Vid Vidyaranya. Vid Vid who came along with Sri Sampradaya? Who is that? Uh, Vidyar uh, Vedanta Shika. Vedanta Shika. Vedanta Shika. Yeah. They came with Vidyaranya and they all helped in establishing the kingdom of Vijayanagar. But eventually, when Vyasa Tirtha became the guru, it was not that he wiped out the Advaitins. So, it was that. The important thing was that the not that the king was propagating a particular uh, denom particular uh, denomination, but that the various denomination, whichever denomination was there, the guru was was in one sense a blessing or helping aiding the king uh, in establishing dharma. And once dharma is established, different people can choose different things. So of course, in today's world, when there are intolerant, uh, there is intolerant religions or intolerant faith, then. Sometimes this thorn of thorn to your thorn can be adopt, maybe adopted, but so then if we consider in the modern times that secularism may be a functional reality, but when they somebody some religions play the minority card or the secularism card and then minority and faith card and then majority, then then it becomes a broader social issue, which needs to be dealt with. And in this case, it's more of uh, these girls being manipulated by people with an ulterior agenda. And the, this parallel with Karana was striking. That uh, Karana says that I don't that Duryodhan is not trustworthy, but still he he is ready to die for Duryodhan. Mother Tetakta Jivita, as he said. So that is that is the unfortunate situation of somebody who has mob confidence. That means they have no self-confidence. And then they may do virtues, virtue posturing, virtue signaling, but in one sense, they are bankrupting themselves. So in one sense, we could say this issue is a minor issue, however it is resolved. But when it has been made into a major issue, then at this stage, we have to, um, we have to consider that, say, uh, that standing up is important so that uh, the further exploitation of people in the name of religion uh, to promote a particular agenda doesn't happen. And uh, the idea is that in educational institute, people are coming for education. So whatever is required for that, that should be the priority. Not the like, nice point about where you're coming for artha and karma, then come there for that. Don't bring your uh, dharma over there. And there is a space for practicing dharma. Nobody is denying that. And towards the end, we discuss that, say, one thing you said is that performing yajna individually is what can make us sturdier. And then by the influence of higher powers, those who are enemies of humanity can be neutralized. So it's a, rather than thinking that it is irrelevant for us or that we are alone, we see that 
we each of us are a part of something bigger and when we play our part then gradually we can contribute to a more constructive change where there can be harmony uh, in terms of different different religious denominations and and you could say more pressing social issues the uh, the society can flourish and progress okay. any other points you would like to add prabhu yes, thank you fantastic thank summary. you very much for a very illuminating discussion many new dimensions uh, and perspectives come up in each time we discuss thank you so much we'll meet thank you thank you